The first drill that you will use uh, while doing your Gen X single piece implants, whether basal or compressive, even in fact for the two piece implant is this drill, DB2020. There is a laser marking here that tells you the name of the implant. Also there are different laser markings for the depth. There is a depth gauge on the kit so you can check what laser marking corresponds to which depth 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So this is your first drill. After doing this drill you can directly place your compression 3.0 implant. Then to place implants above 3.0 you, you can use the D-step 1. The D-step 1 is also called as DC3516. 3.5 is diameter and 16 is the length that is 16 millimeters in length it has laser markings to correspond to various depths in the maxilla as i mentioned the bone is very soft we have d3 and d4 quality bone and in the maxilla many times i have found just by using the first drill i can place easily up to 4.0 compression implant but in the mandible the bone is a lot denser the cortical bone on the crest is a lot denser and hence it is important to use this drill to uh, before placing the implant. Uh, with this drill you can place the compression 3.5 and even 4.0. If you are going to place larger diameters in the mandible then we have a crestal drill. This is also called as DEC step 2 and this crestal drill is, the, is just to widen the crestal cortical. Just the crestal cortical. So here for the 4.0 up to here for the 4.5 up to here for the 5.0. Okay. And this is just we are only widening the crestal cortical because the compression implant can very easily compress cancellous bone. So this drill is just for the cortical, okay, the crestal cortical. So this is the drilling for the compressive implants. As I said in the maxilla, minimal drilling is required. In the mandible, uh, you may need to follow the entire protocol. My recommendation always is, is do one drill less, one drill diameter less start to insert the implant if you are facing very high insertion talks you can always take it out and do a little bit in the crestal area but if you over drill and you get lesser torque then besides taking a larger diameter implant there's nothing else you can do now regarding the insertion of the implant this is the insertion tool and you can see here the diagram is made for the external connection for the single piece implant and for example let's take this compression implant so this is the abutment. So the insertion tool goes over the abutment and then initially you insert the implant first by hand and then once you cannot go anymore then to this you add the ratchet and you can torque in the implant. So this is the insertion tool. Another guide, helpful guide is that we can know the complete insertion of the implant when the tip of this insertion tool the tip of this insertion tool, this part touches the gum level. Okay, we can know that the implant is completely inserted. So this is how it is placed and you can insert the implant first with the hand and then with the ratchet. Also what we have then is the drill extender. As I said, if the adjacent teeth are hindering or you need to use the drill in a difficult to access place, you can put the drill into the drill extender and then this part goes into the handpiece and you can use the drill with better access this way. If ever the drill gets stuck inside the drill extender, it's very easy to remove. You just take your probe, put it into this gap and just turn it and the drill comes out very easily. Uh, then this is the ratchet. This is the basic ratchet and this fits on top of the insertion tool. Okay. And it has uh, a clockwise and an anti-clockwise action. So you must see the word in. When you see the word in, that is when, when you turn it, it will go clockwise and it will insert your implant. If you want to remove the implant or you want to unscrew the implant for whatever reason, you remove the ratchet, turn it around and when you see the word out, it will then work in the anti-clockwise direction and you will be able to remove the implant. As I said, I recommend always to use the torque ratchet. The torque ratchet has a feature that you can check 
the insertion torque of your implant and you can also protect it from excessive torque. So this is the handle over here. When you rotate this, if you keep an eye on this line, it will move. You can see now it's going up to 80. If I move it the anti-clockwise way, it will go lower down up to 40 and even up to 20. So while inserting the implant, the minute you reach 20, you will have this clicking here. Okay, This part will disengage. So you know that you have reached 20. Ideally, we would like to set this insertion torque at at least 60. Okay, Because most implants will be inserted by 40 or 50 newtons of torque. So when you are nearing 60 newtons, so when you are inserting, it will go up to 60. And then at 60, it will click. And finally, the last point what, that I recommend is that you insert it up to 80. You take the torque up to 80. And now when you are inserting the implant and it clicks at 80, you see it's a lot more difficult now. Okay. I recommend at this point that you take out the ratchet, put it on the outside and take two turns out. So the implant will come out two turns. Then you put it back on the inside. And now you will find that the, that the implant will go in at least four turns. So you go out two times, then you put it on the inside and go one, two, three, four. That means this implant is now acting like an expander. It is expanding the bone as it goes in. Should you have a situation where after taking out two turns, when you put it on the inside and again when it goes in, it only goes in two turns and again at 80 it clicks. That means it's, it's better in this case to remove this implant, take the crestal drill if it's the compression implant okay and just do a little bit in the crest and when you reinsert your implant it will go a lot more easier but in most cases in my experience I always see that when I do in and out in and out after four or five times the entire implant is inserted. Mm -hmm.